loving God, loving God. Please don't join the re uh, religious folks that are playing all kinds of religious gymnastics in church who just ride forward and be throwing some money down as if they are testing God to see whether he's faithful. Or it is almost as if they are buying some miracles and breakthroughs from God without a heart for him. God doesn't need a dime to bless you. He needs your heart. He needs your heart. Our father Bishop Weyadipo once said something. He said somebody came to his office and uh, knowing the, the, the hand of God and the blessing of God upon his life, he said, sir, I want to show this money. No, he said, I, I, I want to, uh, he used the word, whether I want to buy into the anointing or I want to something, you know, those, those religious language they've been using. And uh, Papa said, he looked at him and said, listen to me, young man. You can never buy into anything that is of God. Never. Never. He said, let me lay my hands, my leg, everything on you without a heart for God. Forget it. Forget it. And so if you think you came here to write that, that check you are holding, you think is a big check, right? And you think God will be impressed by that check and then release the anointing <laughs> on you. <laughs> he said, forget it. He said, the same way that um, this, uh, this magician or whatever got born again and was following Philip, and then Peter and uh, John got there and they lay hands on the, the people and they received the Holy Ghost baptism and he said, hi, I like this power. Please take this money and let me get that power. Peter said, you and your money should perish. That's the same thing people are practicing today. But today the pastors are telling them you are blessed for doing that. You and your money should perish for thinking that you can buy anything of God. He said, for that thought in your mind, you have nothing. I mean, in God, nothing. There is nothing you, you will get from God for even having that thought. But today, that is what is being preached. And people believe in that because they, they don't want to love God. So they think they can give something to God to get what they want from him. But it is all your heart. Bishop told us, he said, God release the ocean upon my life. The ocean that was upon his servant, Kenefegin. He said, it was released upon me. I saw it. God told me, son, it is now over to you. He said, that day I did not give a dime to Kenef. No, he didn't even meet me physically. He didn't have to see me. I sat behind uh, 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 in the balcony and, and I was so focused and, and, and my spirit was open because I knew why I was in that service. And I said, Lord, whatever is upon your servant, I need it. And it came. It was released upon me. And, and he said, it hit me. And, and I was serving. And God said, son, it is over to you now. He said, that day I did not give a dime to him. So who told you you need money to be blessed? I mean, you need to pay some money to be blessed. Why, why are people falling for these things? When God was going to release the spirit of wisdom upon Joshua, he told Moses, lay your hand upon the boy and I will release the spirit of wisdom upon him. And that was what Moses did. Moses didn't tell Joshua, okay, Joshua, uh, you know, you, you need to sow into the anointing. Uh, this the spirit of wisdom is heavy so you five thousand dollars put it down put it down put it down and stand on it and then i'm going to release couple you see all these are aquatic but unfortunately because people don't have heart for god that is what they are falling for and so today when people want miracles they carry money in their purse and they go around looking for some anointed somebody somewhere because they know that they are going to be asked to put money down for the release of the anointing upon their lives. But church, all those things are lies. All you need is a heart for God. A heart for God. A heart 
for God. Just love him. If you are not going to love God, who are you going to love? Nobody loved you more than God. Nobody laid his life down. Nobody is so much concerned about you that he poured his blood for your sake. So if you can't love him, then who are you going to love? And all he needs from you is your heart. Give me your heart. He can't force it from you. You are going to willingly give it to him. So my son, I want to bless you, but I don't have your heart yet. So give me your heart. So I can bless you. Give me your heart. So instead of giving him money, give him your heart. Praise the Lord. Now that is not to speak against sowing seed and all those things. Of course, you know we believe in that. But we do it on the right platform. You don't have to be pressured to do it. You don't have to be coerced to do it. As a matter of fact, when we put pressure on you and you do it, fine, you have done it, but God will never accept it because you gave it reluctantly. So when you come to understand God's principle and you love him, you will see things working in your life. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Everything will work in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I said everything will work in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so Matthew chapter 22. And let's read it again. We read it last week. I want us to read it again. Matthew chapter 22 and from verse number 20, 37. 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 38. This is the first and great commandment. So we touched on the first and the great commandment last week, which is loving the Lord. So now today, by the Spirit of God, we're going to touch on the second. Let's go, 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we've touched on the first one, the first and the great one, which is loving God. The second one, loving your neighbor as thyself. So we're going to go into that today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus is saying that this is the second one that you will love your neighbor as thyself. You will love your neighbor as thyself. You will love your neighbor as thyself. And listen, it is a commandment it's not a suggestion a commandment and um, first john 5 3 made us to understand that for this is the love of god that we keep his commandment this is the love of god you want to know whether you love god or not the bible says the proof of your love for god is obeying his commandment this is the love of god that we keep his commandment what is the commandment you love your neighbor as yourself you love your neighbor so you see when i'm loving you as myself i'm loving you as an obedience to god based on the love i have for him so because i love god that is why i cannot hate you are you getting the point i love god therefore i can't hate you because hating you is disobeying the one i love so when you understand it this way, you come to understand that your love for your neighbor is unconditional. It's not because you are good to me. It's not because we come from the same family. It's not because we knew each other when we were young. No, it's because I love God. So there is nothing you will do to me that will make me hate you. Because my loving you has nothing to do with your attitude, your behavior. No, it has to do with my love for God. Glory be to Jesus. So when you get it that way, there is nothing anybody will do that will make you decide to hate him. Unfortunately, a lot of love song people are singing around is conditional. You know, I love you so much because you are good. Oh, I remember what you did for me last year. Oh, it was awesome. I, I, I love this brother. I love this brother. Last year, he was so good to me. You know, so that makes the love conditional. Oh, I love that sister. We all went to the same school when we were kids. We all went to the same school. That's why I love it. I love that brother because we come from the same country. That's why I love him. You know, so all, all these things are, if I should use the word, widely.